Good morning, and this is Off the Press program. When we look at the national dailies and try to assess them, make sense of it as much as we can. I will do so from here, and I'll be joined remotely by uh, political analyst Lulu Elegwe. Good morning, Lulu. Are you there? Well, I'm sure he's there. He will join me. Yes, I am. Good morning, Amaka. Great, great. Good to have you uh, um, with me reviewing the papers remotely. We will begin sure. with the Punch newspaper, and I will read out the headlines, and then I come back to you, Lulu, for your thoughts. And the Punch newspaper, as you can see, already displayed on your screen says, NNPC reduces petrol depot price to 108 Naira. That story is on page 25. Airlines lose 17 billion Naira monthly to COVID-19, according to the federal government, unfortunately. That story is also on page 23. Federal government and states will feed school children at home, minister insists. That story is also on page 6. Now, there is the interesting story that has been making uh, trending from last evening. Opening markets, closing churches for COVID-19 wrong, according to Oye Depo on page seven. And the big story for the Punch newspaper, security agents must stop violation of interstate lockdown, uh, says the NGF. And that story, you find it on pages two and nine of the Punch newspaper. The presidential task force decries dubious concealment of passengers in food trucks. Yobe governor dismisses reports of states uh, 155 COVID-19 deaths. Uh, if you scroll down, you will see picture story. I believe, yeah, that's uh, those who came in yesterday. Woman gives birth on Dubai flight, evacuating 265 Nigerians. Interesting. That story is on page seven. And picture story there shows, I believe, uh, Nigerians who came in last night from UAE. Now, Ekiti plans testing 100,000 persons before July. How are they going to do that? Check page 11 of the Punch newspaper and find out. Trigger happy policeman shoots web designer for driver's error. Again, we have such stories. It is on pages four and six, pages four and five rather, of the Punch newspaper. Northern governors have resolved to stamp out al Majurei, according to El Rufai. That story is on page 10. And the federal government extends ban on flights by four weeks. On page 20, vehicle kills Oguman making video call to girlfriend. Unfortunately, again on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And lastly, uh, Fasorante's daughter's killer fills escape bid from isolation center on page eight. Now let's come to you, uh, Lulu. Uh, I'm sure they'll display back the the paper. What's catching your attention there? There seem to be so many interesting headlines there. <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of the ones, like you mentioned, that's been trending since yesterday, which mm -hmm. is the um, Bishop Oedeko saying that um, you can't lock churches and open markets. Right? It's, um, this, there's an issue with it. I think these kinds of um, statements is probably why is one of the reasons why we are in the situation we're in, because we have um, people who have a lot of following. They have a significant following. They have a lot of influence, and unfortunately, they keep using their platform to make ridiculous statements like this. Mm -hmm. um, when you say that. All basically, all, all all he's essentially saying is that churches should should be reopened, right. which I'm not sure how that makes any sense. Because if we're, if we're talk, talking about social distancing, mm -hmm. then no, you you shouldn't be doing that. Whether it's a church, whether it's a mosque, why are markets open? Markets are open because they sell food. Food will keep people alive. It's that simple. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what um, what point he's trying to make in saying that. You cannot keep churches locked and markets open. It doesn't. It doesn't even make any sense. Mm. But unfortunately, there are people that would not only would not only um, defend him, but actually take these kinds of comments seriously. And then you start to see um, you you start to see the, these kinds of comments um, getting more and more traction yeah. within the society because this um, very influential person has said it to so someone else now says it and says, yes, this is what this bishop said, and it's true. Why are, why are churches open and markets open? Um, um, uh, why are churches closed and markets open? We need to stop these kinds of things. And I think 
it's unfortunate that someone like that would make such a comment and it's it, it's sad to be honest mm -hmm. it's really really sad and we can only hope that this does not drift into some kind of religious conversation because if people of other religious persuasions in this Absolutely. country begin to Absolutely. insist and say, uh, uh, you know, begin to make statements like this, I'm sure the purpose of defeating yeah. COVID-19 uh, will be lost even in it all. Anyways, yeah. we, we will continue. We'll proceed with other stories. Federal government uh, states says uh, states will feed school children at home. Uh, ministers insist. What's your thought on that? Mm. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how. So when, when I see stories like this, I'm not quite sure how they intend to do it. It's all well and good to say that. Mm. Um, but we all know that we're not a country that is very good at keeping data, for example. So when you talk about feeding children at home, which children, in which homes, in which areas, uh, how, how are you determining who will, who will receive this food? I'm not quite sure how they intend to do that. I've heard all sorts of things. There's um, same things about use about BVN. I think Kaduna is doing something about anyone who recharges their phone on an average of maybe 200 naira a week or something like that. So, yes, there are all those ways you can do that, but it's two things. Yes, you, you will reach some people, but you will, there's no way, because we don't, keep, we don't keep proper data, we're never going to reach the number of people we need to reach. And so while um, some people will benefit, you're going to find a lot more people prote protesting, and it starts to make it seem like nothing is happening at all. So I made, I made a point earlier, on, um, I think from the, from the other show this morning, that we're suffering in Nigeria for steps we did not take a long time ago. One of that is keeping adequate data. Yes, we've tried to close that gap with things like BVN and uh, national ID card number and these things. But these are, while these are welcome steps, there are things that should have happened a long time ago. So when we, have, when we are now in this kind of pandemic situation, we're starting, so those, those, those um, deficits are starting to become more and more exposed and they're starting to become a real problem. So when they say they're going to feed children, well, if, they, if there's a way they can do it that I'm not seeing, fantastic. I just don't see how. Mm. All right. Uh, still on COVID-19 and so many mis misunderstanding or misinterpretation or a lack of seriousness of understanding how uh, this situation is. I'm sure you heard the story also, which I read out on the, on the punch before we move to the nation, of the presidential task force complaining that, you know, people are being are hidden uh, in truck, the trucks for food. So it, it begs the question, what is going yeah. on? What are we doing? Are we sabotaging our own efforts, yeah, so, so to speak? Yeah, 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 we are, because at the end of the day, this, the government can only do, and this, again, this is another point I made earlier, that this is one of those cases that the citizens actually have a much bigger part to play than the government. Because the government can put all these guidelines in place, but it's not, I mean, we're a nation of supposedly 200 million people. There's no way, there's no government in the world that can track 200, that can adequately track 200 million people. So when you have people going through. I think I saw a video of um, travelers from, was it Kano or Kaduna, coming to Oshun or somewhere, um, hidden in the back of trucks with cows and goats and things like that. And if my work is that that video showed um, the truck that was apprehended, and I have to assume that there were trucks that got away with it. So you have to assume that that's the one that got caught. So when we, when, when we start to see these things, and then if we start seeing spikes in cases, or we start seeing this so-called unexplained death, which is almost guaranteed to be COVID-19 related, then we start to go back and blame the government that the government is not doing enough. But in this case, the government is actually doing the responsible thing. So we, the citizens, if we're not responsible ourselves, then there's not a lot the government can do if the citizens decide to be irresponsible. Because these sorts of things, hiding in trucks and doing all these sorts of things, it's, it's irresponsible. It's, it, that's, that's the only word I can think of. And it's, it's sad that we're in this kind of situation. Because if, we, if we're testing enough, I suspect that the numbers we have in Nigeria are going to be significantly higher than what they, what they are right now. And as we ramp up testing and these sorts of things keep happening, then I, I cringe to think about, about what the results would be.
Me too. Let's go to the Nation newspaper now, uh, which will be displayed. Thank you very much. Already displayed. Again, it says 224 billion naira uh, loss cripples aviation sector. Airports to remain short, unfortunately. That's the race on page five. Petrol to sell for 108 naira per liter. Uh, government goes tough on breach of antivirus rules. Security agents drafted on page six. And for the nation, it says gloomy outlook for states as federation accounts fall. Uh, you can see the figures there also displayed. And then to the right, we see the global figures of COVID-19. Globally, it's now at 3.7 uh, with 200, 262,641 deaths and 1.2 recoveries. Uh, um, then for Nigeria, you also see the figures. Now, we we'll also have the pictures uh, from the nation. 256 stranded Nigerians return from UAE. The story is on page six, and it's on that uh, uh, flight that woman gives birth about flies and stays back. Oh, all right. And then we have inside the stories four doctors, eight nurses uh, test positive to COVID 19. UK's death cases rise to 30,000. And NCDC received 35,000 test kits, good news. And 311 violators convicted in Kaduna. Patients flee from Oyo and Bochi. Why Obio and Akpo and Potakot are shut down? Uh, find out. FCT arrest for the for the three travelers. Uh, Yobe lawmakers go, lawmaker rather goes into isolation. Many more on pages six, eight, and eleven. Now, three hundred forty-three terrorists, one hundred fifty-three bandits killed in two months. Uh, that story is on page four. Man to police uh, keep my son in prison on page four also. All right, let's go to uh, Lulu now. Um, 256 back from UAE. Good decision. What's your thoughts? <laughs> um, well, they, I think they said they, they tested and then just before the, um, or before they boarded the plane from the UAE and they all tested negative, which is a good thing. Um, but even on, at that, they will still be isolated for 14 days yeah. on arrival, which again is a good thing. So I think it's not um, so much of an issue as because they've taken those two major steps, those two major precautions. If they didn't, then it would be then that would be a different conversation. But they have, and I think that's the responsible thing to do. So we yeah, are good on them. Okay. Okay. Shall we proceed to other items? Um, 108 naira. Uh, the fuel price is reduced. Is that good news or, well, just somewhere there in the middle? What's your thoughts? Petrol to sell for 108 naira <laughs> well, per depends, liter. It depends on how you look at it. Because right. It's a good thing in terms of, yes, petrol, it means petrol is cheaper. But at the end of the day, the, the, the country hasn't opened up properly. So um, most people's cars are in their houses anyway. Um, people aren't going out that much. Um, so while it's, a, it's, it's the same thing with, um, I guess, every, every part of the, of the oil industry at the moment, the, the, the industry is suffering. Uh, planes aren't going and aren't flying anywhere. Yeah. And you can see that from the, you can see that from what's happening in the aviation industry. Yeah. Uh, Virgin Atlantic is on the verge of collapse. So we're having all these sorts of all these sorts of issues within, the, within that sector. So it's, again, it, 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 do with what is going on right now. So the fact that petrol has reduced, while that's good, um, I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes right now. Um, because like I said, people, a lot of people are not going anywhere. Hopefully, if things improve and we start to go around that for, um, around on our daily business, it still remains at that price, I, I hope, um, then we can start to see the, the, the benefits of doing that. All right, um, let's even take a look at the head, the major story for uh, the nation newspaper, which is talking about you know the gloomy outlook okay. for the gloomy outlook for states as federation accounts falls. How are we going to get out of this? Will be you know mm -hmm. the question to ponder about. <laughs> The, the reality is this is it's like um, it sort of reminds me of what happens in what happened in 2007 2008 2009 um, during the financial crisis there were uh, it was a global thing so most countries in the world were affected so different obviously different countries took different steps for their own individual situations but the reality is that it was a global economic recession 
Now, this was pandemic related, but the result is the same. The, the entire global economy is pretty much shut down. Um, jobs, uh, salary, salary cuts, job losses, businesses are not making money. Um, whole industries are entirely on hold, are, are pretty much on hold. We talked about aviation earlier, the hospitality industry, pretty much every industry is affected. Mm. So in terms of what the government can do, I think the vice president is heading up an economic um, sustainability committee or something like that, looking at how how we can um, take either take advantage or introduce steps that will mitigate some of these factors. But, the, but like I said, it's not. It, there's no easy fix for it because nobody knows how long. I think the uncertainty is the main issue. Nobody knows how long this is going to go on for, and and some people might not like to hear this, but until we actually have vaccines. Um, where it's going, the world will not return to normal until we actually have vaccines. That's the that's the long and short of it. Yeah. Until there's a way to actually treat this virus, um, you're not going to see normal global um, economic activities resume. And unfortunately, that's going to be for a while. So yes, some things there are going to be periods where things spike. There are going to be periods where things go down. But in terms of actual normalcy pre December, November, December normalcy, I think that's going to, to take a while. So, yes, the government can take certain steps, but um, on, from a general point of view, it's going, it's going to be like this for a while. Mm -hmm. All right. I have, also, yeah, uh, I have also Dr. Hussein Shaibu uh, joining us via phone to uh, join in the conversation for reviewing the paper as we move to the next paper. Good morning, Dr. Shaibu. Good morning. All right. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us. So uh, yeah. I have also Lulu Elegbe, who is a political analyst. He is also reviewing, joining, he's already reviewing with me via Skype. We will now exactly. proceed to the next paper, which is this day, already displayed. It says, yeah. OPS backs proposed 20 uh, dollar oil price benchmark in 2020 budget. That story is on the front page. It's continued on page 8. Aviation stakeholders hail the federal government's plan to bail out airlines on page five. Nigerians yet to come to terms with the deadly nature of COVID-19, the federal government mm. laments. Once again, mm. dangers ahead of non-compliance with guidelines, says Buhari concerned about increasing infection among health workers, extends flight ban by four weeks, predicts many, more, many airlines won't survive. Ask states to increase isolation centers, to inaugurate um, uh, these days 320 bed isolation center on Tuesday, cases rise to 3,145 with 534 discharged and 103 dead. We'll stay on, on this paper. Uh, of course, we have some picture story also. Uh, dome treatment center supported by Sahara. All right. Uh, let's go back on the front page. If you roll, put it back on the front page. Yeah. Uh, so, so we can get uh, Dr. Shaibu to respond to any of the matters. Do you agree? Nigerians yet to come to terms with the deadly nature of COVID-19. Dr. Yes. Shaibu? Yes, uh, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I mean, I was um, following developments in the north. And I discovered that... Um, they are not they are not very serious about fighting uh, covid 19 they are not as proactive as some of their um, uh, counterparts in the south and even in the east and all that and every day we hear about increasing number of patients we hear that um, uh, the death toll is increasing and all that so you just find out that and then you you listen to some videos, listen to some speeches that are made, and you discover that some people are still uh, thinking that the whole thing is a joke. Mm. In fact, I had one yesterday, and he was saying that um, this whole thing was political. Uh, people were looking for a way to get money from the federal government and all that. I, I, don't, I don't rule out that possibility, but um, the most important thing that we should know is that we should look at what is happening in other parts of the world, and we know that this thing is not a joke. People are dying. People are looking for a uh, way out. I mean, like yeah, um, my co-guest um, uh, uh, analyst was talking that the thing is so serious that it may not even go away until a vaccine is produced. Mm -hmm. So if we are talking about 
is going to be around until the vaccine is produced. Why is somebody thinking that um, it is not real? Why is somebody thinking that it's a joke? Mm -hmm. So I, I still think that to some extent, some people still think that this whole thing is a joke. And it's unfortunate if mm -hmm. they are thinking like that. That means that they are not aware of what is happening in their external environment. Right. Because I mean, the guys uh, in the West will not be joking with stuff like this. Nobody wants to lock down a country you know because of this you see the evasion people like we have on the headline they are talking about bailouts that industry is on its knees mm -hmm. and if there is no bailout for that industry that industry will be it will be difficult for that industry to get back on its feet again right. not just that tourism not that the hotel the creative industry and so on so it's not a joke at all Right. Mm. Unfortunately, that's where we are going to end it. Thank you, Dr. Hussein Shaibu, for joining us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lolu Elegbe, also for being with me uh, during this segment and in the previous one. Thank you very much, Martha. All right. You both stay safe. And this is where we are going to call it a wrap on Off the Press. Remember, we do this Monday to Friday. The time is 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. Remember to join us. I am Amaka Okoye saying please stay safe out there until this is over. <laughs>